All right, praise the Lord and glory to God. This is 2019. I want to welcome you to the Light of Life broadcast tonight. You will be blessed. From Life Church International, my name is Apostle David Juma. We are trusting God, the Word of God will have an impact in your life. We are dealing with a theme at the beginning of the year, possessing the gates of our enemies. This is a promise that God gave to Abraham in Genesis 22 verse 17 and it's now fulfilled in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ, then everything was, that was promised to Abraham shall be yours. And we believe this word will bless you. And we are trusting God. If you are in the city and you are able to access Nairobi, Kenya Cinema Plaza, uh, right in Moy Avenue in the city center is where we are ministering from and worshiping the Lord. And you are welcome for our Sunday services at 9 a.m. We are trusting God. You will enjoy moments of worship and the ministry of the word. Every morning, Monday to Friday, we have morning glory and also lunch hours at uh, 12.45. We believe the word of God will have an impact in your life. We believe as you watch this message, something good is going to happen. And then at the end, I'm going to pray with you. Let's trust God together. You will possess the gates of your enemies. In other words, God's kingdom is coming. And let the kingdom of God that is inside of you overpower everything else that you find out there. So God bless you and welcome in Jesus' name. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time. What did he say out of heaven? By myself, he said, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing, I will bless you and multiply, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sad which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because you have obeyed my voice. Wow. Let's also read Genesis 24 and from verse 55. But her mother, I mean her brother and her mother said, let the young woman stay with us a few days, at least ten. After that, she may go. And he said to them, six, do not hinder me since the Lord has pro prospered my way. Send me away so that I may go to my master. And they said, we will call the young woman and ask her personally. So, ato kitaftiwa, it is your personal decision. Then they called Rebecca and said to her, Will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. So they sent away Rebecca, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant and his men. Verse 60. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, Our sister, may you become the mother of thousands of ten thousands and may your descendants possess the gates of those who hate them wow I want to continue with some key highlights that the spirit of God has given us from this text that is going to help us understand how we are possessing the gates of our enemies before I do that let me connect those two verses. Here is Abraham. He has a promise. And the promise will go to his descendants. To his seed. Here is another family. And they have their sister. And miraculously she has come to water her animals. And then waters the Abraham's servant animals. And there is a connection. And then the young man who was sent. Goes to the family of Rebecca. And he is there a couple of days then it's time for Rebecca to be released so that she can go and be married to this man who she's not met. What a way. And look, the blessing they gave Rebecca is the same blessing. That your descendants will possess the gate of those who hate them. Two people have the same promise to possess the gates. And look at the divine plan of God. The two get 
married or got married. Look, somebody has a similar, I mean, has a promise similar to the other one and the two of them come together. I tell you the truth. Their offspring have no alternative than to have what I'm calling a compounded anointing. This year, we will link up with those whom God has so prepared to line up with the DNA that is also in our lives. Did you hear what I said? If you are in business, you will also connect with other men and women that God has already prepared through the word of God. Hallelujah. And I tell you, there will be an explosion. Receive that in the name of Jesus. We said several words that are key to us. The first word we mentioned last Sunday was the word obedience. Because Abraham obeyed, then God released the promise not only to him, but also to his seed. And we said obedience will secure the gates for you. And what are you obeying? You are obeying God's word. You are obeying his prophetic voice. You are obeying him. And you are taking heed to the command, statutes, and ways that he has given to us. Through obedience, may we possess the gate of our enemies. The other word that God released was the word blessing. And we declared the nature of that blessing. It is the kind of blessing that maketh us rich. And God adds no sorrow, the toil, travail, pain, like a woman giving birth. In your working and going on with your life, you shall not experience this kind of toil and pain and, and, and confusion and sometimes pangs that you can't handle and only to get a little resort. Rather, because the blessing of the Lord is over us, then we will enjoy the riches of God. Both the spiritual riches and material riches, all kinds of riches. You know, yesterday, the Holy Spirit said something very interesting to me as Pastor Tom was preaching. He said, why sometimes God releases houses, vehicles, you know, physical materials to God's people is to show them that he cares for them. Because when you see it among the heathen, you wonder, Lord, like David was wondering, how come you are not doing that which you've done to others? God cares. And because he cares, he will do something for you physical to demonstrate what he is said he will do even for you spiritually. Praise God. And so whatever manifestation or blessing that you desire, may it manifest for you in 2019. Glory to God. The other key word is the word multiplication. In multiplying, I will multiply you and multiply your descendants. This is simply a word saying you will have many children. And we read a scripture in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 10 which God gives as a promise for Jesus. For it was fitting for him. For whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. God is determined this year to bring many sons by Jesus' connection and all that is taught to us in Galatians chapter number 3 and 4 through Jesus Christ we are now co-heirs and therefore we inherit everything that Abraham was given. Listen, here God is promising Abraham a harvest. God watches over his word to fulfill it. Glory to God. The promise of God to Abraham to have many sons and to have a multiplication of descendants. That promise is a promise of a harvest. And that promise is going to keep running in Jesus' name. When Jesus finished his ministry on earth, he gave us Matthew 28 verse 19. Go make disciples of all nations. Wow. That is still part of the Abrahamic promise. Go make disciples of all nations. And we said last year in the camp, you and I are disciples for this season. You need to learn what it means and what it takes to teach somebody, to mentor somebody, to show somebody the way. Glory to God. It doesn't matter how high you are in the kingdom. If there's anything to like being high, you still are required 
to be under someone else who can teach you, guide you, and show you the way. Glory to God. And something very amazing. I had this contact with a prophet from Italy. And I discovered the man has so much detail, especially the writings of Paul, in a phrase you talk about, he knows what it is in their Roman culture. And he said something very strange. He said, when Jesus said that I'm the true vine and you are the branches. And he said, the branch that beareth not fruit, he cutteth away. And the, the you know, so that the, there can be fruit. And he said, the branches that don't bear fruit in a vine are the ones looking up. They are the ones that don't bear fruit. But the ones looking down are the ones who, which bear fruit. And he said the ones looking up are the proud ones and are the ones God cuts away. And he said something I never heard. He said if you are proud and you are always up and you want to lift your head above others and you don't hear anybody, you are Alpha Omega to yourself. You are the people, the axe is laid and they shall be cut. He said the branches that look down are the ones that heavily carry the fruit. Ah. The other word that I want to bring this morning and just spend five minutes on it is the promise to Abraham was because this is 22, chapter 22. In chapter 18, God had declared that Abraham was his friend. And one of the ways in which we are going to possess the gates of our enemies, we are going to possess coming from a relational position of being a friend of God. Who are going to possess the gates of the enemies 2019? Friends of God. Mm. Let's now declare this matter so that it can be installed in your spirit. If you are a friend of God, you will possess the gates of your enemies in 2019. Do you remember when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? I know you are not there, but have you read about it? And sent some angels to go to check the city and bring it down. Do you remember what happened? God said, how can I do this without first telling my friend Abraham, glory to God. Before God does major things on the earth this year, he will tell the church. Before we know our next president, we will know. Ah, before th major things happen, listen, God doesn't intend to do anything on the earth until first he reveals it to his servants, the prophets, who are prophets. Prophets are those who stay in the presence of God to receive God's counsel, to hear from the Father, to hear from God. And the prophets that are genuine are friends of God. And look, Abraham was declared by God that he was a friend of God. I pray this year, heaven will testify about you and say what you are like, just like he testified concerning Job. He asked Satan who was moving around here and there like a vagabond. Have you met my servant Job? Glory to God. May heaven testify about you. And this dimension of being a friend of God is a major blessing or dimension that is going to help us to possess what God wants us to possess. Because we are his friends. Glory to God. In fact, Abraham was such a friend of God that years later, even the prophets acknowledged that Abraham was a friend of God. Go to Isaiah 41 and verse 8 and hear what Isaiah said. But you, Israel, are my servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend. Wow, Jacob, you are my servant. Glory to God. Israel, you are my servant. Jacob, you are the one I've chosen. Glory to God. All you 12 tribes, all you sons of Israel, sons of Jacob, as it were, you are the ones who are descendants of my friend. Glory to God. If you are a friend of God, you can be sure your ministry will have impact and influence to the next generation. If you are a friend of God, your business shall be able to have impact, influence, and breakthroughs to the next generation. 
and Africans, hear me, we will learn how to raise our own children to run with the vision that we have heard. Our children shall not go to skeleton and be lost. They will follow the footsteps of their fathers. Are you listening to me? Children shall follow the footsteps of their father. Are you listening to me? If we are friends of God, I can assure you this promise shall be. Did you hear the psalmist say that blessed is that man who has his quiver full. He has many sons. Kenyans have two children. But we have announced from the apostolic house. Have four children, five children, many children. Are you listening to me? Pinch your neighbor. Say, I hope you are at a level. You can have children. But of course, have children in a proper way. Blessed is a man who has his quiver full. Why? Because what will happen to those children? They shall be like arrows and they shall stop the enemies at the gates. Hallelujah. A friend of God shall have his children stop the enemies at the gates. In other words, whatever gate you meet, because you are coming from God and you are coming from leadership and you are coming from submission from authority therefore you are son of God and when you face the gates of your enemies you will be able to stop the enemy right at the gate and possess that gate glory to God if we are friends of God then we will possess the gates of our enemies even apostle James in the book of James chapter 2 when he talks about this matter of Abraham uh Verse 23. James talks about faith and so forth and how faith without works is dead and he teaches very powerfully on the matter and talks about the faith of Abraham and then in verse 23 he says as the scripture uh, was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called who? The friend of God. I pray that relational Christianity. Did you hear what I say? Relational Christianity is the key, is the wineskin, is the system, is a spiritual system that will usher you to the next breakthrough and blessing. Let me say that again. Our relationships with one another are so important. God uses these relationships. Glory to God. And when we talk of our relationships, our relationships can be evil, can be bad, can be hindering if God is not at the center. So our relationships, which are horizontal, horizontal relationships are made better if each of the parties in the horizontal setup has a vertical relationship. Did you hear what I say? If we have a vertical relationship with God, then our horizontal relationships shall be uh, a blessing. And this is what John said. Uh, this is what John said. Now, uh, before I go to John, can we agree? James, when he's talking about faith and works, he says, Abraham showed his works by giving his only son Isaac as a sacrifice. And he said, our faith, for it to be real, we got to do something to demonstrate that we really believe in God. Are we together? And this is where physical acts, prophetic acts, giving, sowing, doing uh, service, you know, doing things uh, practically comes into play to demonstrate that we are men and women of faith. Are we together? For faith without an act of sacrificing a son, Isaac, is not faith. But Abraham believed that God who gave me the promise that through my son I will inherit nations. Yet now he wants the son. Is he trying to cut off the promise he gave me for nations? No. Abraham believed God. That this God who wants my son dead is able to raise him up. And that's how he was counted to be a righteous man. His faith hit heaven. May your faith hit heaven. That you believe. Though he has asked me for something difficult. And we said on the first day. Every one of us is always tested by God. Are you listening? To do something major in life. If you will go to the next place everybody wants to go, you must pass the test of obedience to do something major. That's why Abraham is told by the angel the second time, 
Because you have done this thing. That's why in blessing and in multiplying, these things will happen. There must be something that you do to demonstrate that you have faith in God. Are we together? Wow. Let me give you an example. One of them is called fast fruit. What is fast fruit? Get something important. Something that costs you nothing. Maybe in the form of money. At the beginning of the month. I say this January. I give this as my fast fruit. As my thanksgiving. As my seed for the year. And I believe the rest of the year is blessed. Certain people say. My whole salary of the month belongs to God. I will work with 11 months. But the first month belongs to God. And they bring it to the house of God. Those things happen in Morocco. I, very few Nairobians do this kind of stuff. But this generation shall catch up. Because what is this that you will do to shake heaven until God swears by himself? Because there's nobody greater than him. What is this? Anything that shakes you will shake God. Anything that affects your emotions will make God's emotions move. When you give something that emotionally affects you and affects the one you have given, heaven now is moved. Now, the heavens can say, because you have done this thing. Somebody say this thing. Ask your neighbor, what is your this thing for 2019? What is your this thing for 2019? Glory to God. Those are the kind of things that make heaven say, this is my friend. If I tell him to give a son, he will give his only son. This is my friend. Who of you shall have a friend in Luke 18? And a friend comes to you at midnight and says, friend, I have some three visitors from Nairobi and they want bread. But this friend will say, I'm in bed with my children. I cannot wake up. I don't know why they are sleeping with their children. Children should have their own beds and parents their own beds. Anyway, and the Bible says, this man, <laughs> because he is his friend, he will wake up and give him bread as much as he wants. We have taught that before. When we were teaching about the three ways in which you pray. One, you pray as a child, asking God, and you can cry, even remove uh, mucus. Because you are a child crying to God. But there are times you don't need to cry. You come as a friend. If you have a friend, uh, can you please take me to West Lads? And he's crying. What a friend. You will slap him. Say, stop crying. I'll take you. What's wrong with you? There are times you don't cry before God. Because his friend talking to a friend. And then prayer thirdly. Not only you pray as a child. But you can pray as a friend. And thirdly, you pray as this widow. Who comes before a righteous judge. And is asking to be avenged of our enemies. So prayer is a petition in court. And how many of you know you can't cry in court? If you cry in court, the judge will adjourn. And you will be given 15 minutes so that you compose yourself. Because here, this kind of petition, you need to bring your 200 pages. And the advocate will say, at the conclusion of reading his pages, and your honor, this is my prayer that you release my client. With research. In ICC, those guys, Akina Khan and others, had 3,000 pages. You know the devil has your story. And he has 5,000 pages about you. He's trying to use those pages. Page 492. Paragraph 3. Uh, the last line. He has a case which you have hidden. And he's trying to use that. But wait until Parakretos walks into the courtroom. Parakretos is called helper. He's called Holy Spirit. He's called comforter. One who stands with you as an advocate, the Holy Ghost. Wait until he comes into the courtroom. The 3,000 pages or 5,000 pages will become, uh, uh, you know, will just be thrown out because the blood of Jesus, one drop of the blood of Jesus is enough to silence all the accusations of the devil 
from the foundation of the earth even if your mother sinned for you to be born even that accusation one drop of the blood of Jesus is able to wash away your sin for what can wash away my sins nothing but the blood of Jesus can I declare in this service I don't know who you are and where you have come from which hole which manhole which shimo Jesus is able to wash your sins away clean you up sanctify you make you a son of God and then walk with you until you become a friend of God and then God can walk with you and I declare this morning I feel a burden in my spirit none of you shall be an enemy of God each one of you shall become a friend of God each one of you shall walk with God because of his blood we have been brought near even those of you who are far even those of you who are Gentiles even those of you who probably think you did not qualify because of what Jesus did on the cross those who are far are not brought near he has broken the middle wall of partition now we have peace with God hallelujah I belong to the family of God thank God for Jesus somebody thank God for the cross thank God for the power that he released on the cross when he died this is the gospel without this you can't go anywhere thank God for Jesus without him we can't make it there's no way we would survive in Nairobi with all these witches and sorcerers and Freemasons and, and all kinds of Illuminati with all their witchcraft and sitting in high offices uh, masquerading and planning and conspiring against the church talking about noise talking about crazy preachers abusing us they don't know we are not alone we are not kikuyus we are not luos we are not careless we are men and women of God we come by the blood of Jesus we come by a new and living way the devil is in trouble in Nairobi the church of Jesus is arising the army of the Lord is arising we are not here because of tribe we are not here because of education we are here because of what he did on the cross and he brought us into the family we are friends of God somebody lift your hands and bless his holy name well, glory to God. Thank you for tuning in to this message. We want to pray with you. We trust Jesus, the one who's given us the word, is able now to reach you and touch you in a special way. I agree with you by faith that you can have a transformation of your life. And those who are not born again, this is the time to open up your heart that whatever God has promised his church can also be part of your life. And if you receive Jesus, I tell you, your life will begin in a fresh way. He'll forgive your sins. He washed them with the blood of Jesus. He give you hope. He give you love. And I tell you what, your life will never be the same again. So, can we pray together right now? Father God, I pray with this viewer in the name of Jesus. Let the glory of God be revealed. Let the power of God be revealed. Let salvation come to their life. In the name of Jesus. Pray with me. Why don't you say, Lord Jesus Christ, I've heard the word. And today I humble myself. I ask you to come into my life. I believe in my heart and now I confess with my mouth Jesus Christ you are the son of God in Jesus name I pray amen God bless you enjoy the glory of God the presence of God I bless your family and may you walk in divine health may you walk in divine grace and let's gather and worship together we believe Jesus Christ shall continue to change this nation through the gospel we are contributing the little we can through bringing this message through this television channel May you tune in every week and enjoy the presence of God. Shalom, we'll see you soon.